Hello, this is Ben Hollifield with a quick demo of Objectify for ServiceNow. Objectify is a new app um, that we've built to help you stop spending so much time building data and start spending more time building experiences and building uh, applications, user interfaces. Let me show you how it works. So once you install Objectify, it'll show up over here in your left nav, and you start with object definitions. Um, now how Objectify works is it's nothing more than a REST endpoint that you can call from your client side um, application framework, whether it be Angular, whether it be something else, um, and give it a set of parameters and it will return back a curated set of data for you according to the object definition that you create. So let's create a brand new one to show you how it works. So click new object definition and we'll give this a name. This identifier is important because it is what you're going to offer as a parameter in your REST call to then return the data that we configure here. So we'll just call it test object. Um, we'll turn off data transformers, we'll leave off input, and we'll save this. And we'll show you that um, at a very basic level, you can already do a lot with Objectify, with no input, with nothing else, because we have access to all of the session data for the logged in user. So if I go down here and create key definitions, which key definitions correlate to key value pairs inside my object that I'm generating and going to return. So I'll create a simple key. And a simple key, I can give it any name I want to, call it test key, um, just takes a value. And it could be a, um, a normal value, just like you know static text. That would be fine. We also have the ability to use um, more dynamic information. So I can say like JavaScript ID which we all know should return the sysid of the logged in user. So now I've created this object definition of test object with a single key definition. If I click process input and generate sample output, we'll see that right now my sample output based on that key definition is just what I did. It's test key and then my user ID based on my user session. So that'll get us very far. Um, we can do a lot just with session data. Um, we can query against it and perform all kinds of cool stuff with other kinds of key definitions I'll show you in a minute. Um, but what if we do want to accept some input? We can do that. So we need to pass some data back in from the client to the server and do some stuff with it. Click this, and here we can set up sample input. Now normally you'll pass this input in as a, um, as a request payload on your REST call, but for this case we'll just um, create some sample input, which is better for testing. Um, we'll just say name, and again, you can, this is a script, so you can use dynamic values here. We're just going to say name is Ben. Oh, that's me. Very good. We'll save that. And now we'll notice we do have this new tab, sample input. So now if we click um, process input and generate sample output, it'll process whatever we have here in request payload. And this is our processed request payload. And this we can access in any of our key definitions using the syntax indicated here in the annotations. Input.field um, will always get us to whatever hierarchy in this input object we choose to uh, choose to use. So now let's go here and change our test key. And let's say this is just, we'll do JavaScript, say uh, my name is input.name. Click that. So now we're trying to actually use the input in a key definition. If we process this, go to the sample output, we should see, there we go, my name is Ben. So that's great. Um, so it's great we can pass in parameters and use those, but sometimes we need more data than it's just a parameter. Parameters are just a string of text and nothing more, maybe an object at best. So we have these things that we're calling magic keys. And what that allows us to do is to dynamically accept data and parameters and then do something crazy with it. Um, so let's try this. Type in table, sysuser, and then also in this object, let's put sysid and we'll be dynamic. We'll go with uh, gs.getUserID. We'll save this. And now if we go back and reprocess this, notice our, um, our process request payload right now, just name is Ben. Now if we process this with those new keys, this processed payload explodes into an entire glide record that correlates to this user. And that all happens based on magic keys that we can configure. You can create your own. This is a record fetcher, and it looks for these keys in the, in the object. And when it finds those, it go out, goes out, queries for this glide record, and then includes that in our input data. So we can then use that in all of our key definitions. So now if we go back to our test object, we can go here to this simple test key. So now instead of going just input.name into that simple string input we gave it, we can do input.name. Um, 
first name dot two string and that'll go into the first name field on the glide record that I generated transformed based on that magic key update that now we go back and we are probably going to see the exact same output that we got before only this time it's going in to that glide record to get the value of Ben instead of into just that static key that we set so this is a cool capability we can then set our input give it here um, with any uh, magic keys we want explode that input into a really rich data set and then use it down inside our key definitions so now let's go and look at some more what we can do with key, de with key definitions so we saw a simple key definition that can be static text or simple dynamic text let's look at another kind of script let's say script scripted key just as a sample name we look at scripted and here it's just what you would expect it's a server-side script we can come in here and set answer we can do queries any kind of server-side stuff and then just set the answer to whatever we want it to be in this case we'll just do test not test because this is a simple one click submit and now if we go back and reprocess the input and generate sample output now we'll see we have slightly more in our sample output we have our original test key from the simple key definition and then we have this scripted key definition and it's giving us back that data finally let's go back and look at what we call a smart key definition and again you can give these keys any name this is actually what the key will be in the key value pair inside the object that's created smart gives us much more capabilities um, what we can do here is we can actually perform queries against tables with all of our input data and um, pull back arrays of dynamic results that we can then um, process and send back to our uh, our application so here if we say um, say that I want to get all the people who had the same manager as the person that I fed in via my input I could go to the table of user say a max results equals five and then I want to create a condition so the condition I want to create is I want to find all users where manager is equal to JavaScript input dot manager dot sys id dot to string. This will get the manager of the user the input. In this case, it was me. So let's go ahead and um, well, we'll leave it at that. So this should pull those user in, and let's tell it which fields we want to gather, and let's pull those people's uh, name, their email, and let's say the um the created date, the date they were created. So let's submit this and now go back, reprocess. So now our response payload is even richer. And let's drop this into a JSON parser just so we can see it a little bit better. Now we'll see there's our scripted key. We still have that. Down here is our test key, the simple key. And then here's what we just get back from that smart key. So we went out and performed the query, pulled back all the people that had the same manager as me, and then pulled in the fields from their record that we care about. Um, and this is great. Uh, the one bad thing I see here is that this sys created on is a glide record display value. Um, it's not very pretty whenever you're presenting it in a, in, a, um, in a UI. I'd rather have the Unix time so I can then consume that and use Angular filters to make it pretty, show, show whatever format I'd like to show. So let's go back and see how we can do that. We have this full output now, um, but we want to sort of uh, prettify to reformat that date time. We have this thing called data transformers. Let's first of all save that. And then we'll reprocess this and we'll see that magically from the data transformer all of these are now become Unix state times and how do we do that that all comes from these data transformers over here that you can also create your own versions of those essentially what these do is these seek out values um, inside your data set based on either the data type of the field they came from or a regex and then you can go in there, take that value that you found, reprocess it however you like, um, and then replace it in your output object. So you can do this for reprocessing or for reformatting date times, um, for obfuscating social security numbers, whatever kind of thing you need to do. So essentially, we have these object definitions that suck in input data that you provide. They use magic keys to then explode that data into a rich data set. Then we can work on that data inside our object definition, go out, perform queries, um, and build this output object, and then finally transform the data in that object to whatever format we need for consumption inside our final UI. And once you have this built up and you're perfectly happy with the results that you're seeing inside your sample output here, how do you get it into your app? 
We make that easy too. Over in Code Snippets, we provide Angular, JavaScript, and Glide server-side snippets that you can drop directly into your code to access this data. Um, and again, this is not just a uh, not just a stub. This is actually auto-generated with the appropriate identifiers, the appropriate evaluated data from your sample input. You can drop this directly into your code. We even included some uh, some logging statements there to, to push this out into your console, so you can see what you're working with when you're building out your apps. So pretty rich app. Um, we think this is going to accelerate the time to build new front-end um, experiences significantly. Um, we're open to new ideas. We want to make this just as robust as possible. So any feedback, any ideas, any bugs you find, please get those to us. Thanks a lot, and I uh, hope this helps you out.